Hello friends, it's time to start a project I have been planning for a long time. I mentioned it back in the shop tour that I had something pretty fun in mind for this old foot powered sewing machine base. And in this video we'll be making a foot powered lathe. This box contains the other half of the project essentially, the actual lathe. It's a kind of unusual model, as you can see, it's just a pipe that both a tailstock and the tool rest slides along. And then there is this base that bolts to the headstock. I bought this on the local eBay equivalent. I did not pay very much for it. I think I was the only bidder. I also have a chuck. This is obviously not a woodworking chuck, but I think it will be better at least than just this faceplate. I have the back plate for the chuck as well, but I won't be using that. It's for a different kind of arbor, but we'll get to the chuck later. The first thing I want to do is add some wooden feet underneath here to make it a little bit taller. This uh, sewing machine base is made for sitting at, so it's a little bit too low for standing work. It will also add more clearance between the pedal and the floor, which will allow me to make an extension to the pedal, uh, which will give a little bit more leverage. So I'm going to use these chunky boys of spruce and uh, quickly plane them square and uh, bolt them to the feet. All right, I think those feet are going to work really well. This piece of wood is what the lathe will be bolted to. So it also needs to be attached to the steel base. But before that, I need to cut an opening that the drive belt can pass through. It would have been very convenient if this wheel was placed on the outside. So I could just put the board over there and pass the belt right past it, but nope. The wheel is inside the frame and the way I can mount the top to the base is on the outside of the frame. So 
So the tabletop is ready to be attached, but I'm not going to do that just yet because I don't have the drive belt yet. You'll see later why I need to get that on before I attach the top. But for now, I want to direct your attention down to the pedal. As I mentioned earlier, I want to extend the pedal out to about here to give me a bit more leverage and also make it as wide as it can possibly be so that I can put my foot wherever it's most comfortable rather than being confined to a certain spot. Right, so this fits in here, however, if I would attach it like so, that would mean this is the lowest position and at the top of the stroke the pedal will be way up here and I don't want that. I want it to be close to level at the highest point and at the lowest point it should be somewhere down there pretty close to the floor so what i'm thinking is sort of a spacer with an angle on it <laughs> actually this this is a test piece for a, a molding plane it has some profile on it anyway it doesn't matter if i put that in like there that will give an almost perfect angle Okay, so the drive belt I ordered has arrived and uh, it's time to put it on. The flywheel on the pulley rides on this uh, axle. It spins on a taper in there and a taper here. On this side, the tapered end of the shaft goes into a screw that can be pulled in and out. And that is done by first loosening this little set screw that clamps down on a flat spot of the screw inside there. It needs to be a little bit snug so that it keeps the screw from rotating, but loose enough that it can slide back and forth. And that is done by rotating this nut here. So by loosening it that way, the screw can now be pushed in and this whole assembly becomes loose. However, this is where that screw would need to come out and it's blocked by this purely decorative detail. So it's not actually possible to remove this assembly using that clever mechanism that they have built. Instead, I have to remove the entire side unless there is something I'm missing but uh, I've looked at this for ages now and this is the only way I can figure out to do this. I don't think I have to completely disassemble it I just need to gain enough wiggle room here to be able to push that screw far enough back I don't understand how they got this assembled. It, it, it doesn't come out. But maybe I can get the belt in there anyway.
that was incredibly inconvenient despite being such a seemingly smart construction but the belt is in place that's the important thing i have pulled it through the opening in the table and it seems to be gripping the pulley just fine let's see if i got a belt of the right length i mean uh, it spins but there is a lot of friction somewhere that has to come out. Okay, so I think I have found a setup that is going to work. Right now the belt is rubbing right here, as well as on a part of the sewing machine base further down. The latter can be countered by pushing the lathe back, but then of course I need more space here. So what I'm going to do is cut away that right there, like that deep. no longer rubbing it's running pretty smoothly now i have to fine tune the location of the tabletop and the lathe to make sure the belt has as much room as possible and also i'm trying to get the pulleys as close as possible to aligned so they are not like that but parallel to each other just doing it by eye is obviously not ideal but Nothing about this lathe is super accurate anyway, so I'm honestly not too worried. There will be some premature wear to the belt and to the shaft and to everything. I think this is where it needs to be. So let's mark for some screws. Well, I dripped a little bit of oil here and there, and uh, I have to say I'm surprised how fast this goes. I'm really excited about this. The first thing that I'm going to actually turn on this woodworking lathe is a piece of metal. I'm going to attempt to true up the rim of this faceplate. I think that might be enough actually. The reason why I did that is because, as I mentioned earlier, this is the chuck I'm going to use. And in order to uh, locate the holes I need to drill into this plate for bolting the chuck into, I figured I can just clamp the chuck onto the face plate like that and use it as a drill guide. But to do that, I of course have to make sure that the plate is sitting centered in the chuck which should be easier with uh, a slightly more concentric outer rim now still expecting to have to do some adjustments but now that i can see shiny spots all the way around i know that it should be not very far out of out of circular Whoa, the, the extra momentum from the chuck is just incredible. I can maintain the speed forever, it feels like it's like no work. I just have to follow the pedal, match the tempo, I'm, I'm exerting very, very little force, which 
should be a good thing. It should mean that it's fairly centered, otherwise it would not get up to speed so easily. And it doesn't seem to have a preferred place to come to rest. If I bring up the tool rest so that it's just barely touching, I can check if that's the same all the way around. Seems like it is. So I'm fairly confident now that this chuck is centered to the axis of the lathe. And I can now remove it along with the faceplate. And I know where I can drill my holes. So uh, I have put a piece of dowel in the chucks, got a skew chisel here, not a, an actual wood turning tool, but let's see if it works. So incredibly cool. I've had this in my head for so long. I always thought, you know, it should work in theory, and it does. Oh, it's a good feeling. So I'm going to add a belt guard. I have some scrap plywood. I'm just going to throw together a quick uh, housing thing. The belt guard is in place. I have a new workpiece in the chuck and I'm trying out the tailstock as well. And I have found a slightly more appropriate turning tool. Hopefully I got a decent edge on it. It's not great, but, um, but it does work and uh, I'm addicted. <laughs> It 
it's a pretty rough finish that is partly because this is pine and pine always is rough when you are cutting it across the grain it's partly because it's not the best edge possible on here and i'm sure a big part of it is down to technique as well but i mean you can always use sandpaper and frankly it is better than i was expecting it to be look at these beautiful little shavings this makes me happy not sure how well it shows up but i think i got this groove a lot smoother than this there's a lot more tear out these walls i mean it's no mirror shine but a step in the right direction so yeah there we have it i am very excited to start learning how to use this thing and incorporate some turned objects into my pieces of furniture things like drawer pulls and doorknobs small legs perhaps and other sculptural details i don't think i will do a whole lot of turning but it's going to be very useful and fun to have access to the first project that is going to incorporate some wood turning is going to be something uh, quite different thank you for watching and i'll see you soon